All right, so let's keep going here, uh, putting things together for our view pager view here. All right, so things are looking decently okay. Uh, let me put another text view at the bottom here. Again, we can always change things later. Let's say wrap content. This is going to be give an ID. I'm just going to say this is going to be, I'm going to call this, how about ID? I'm going to say this is forecast. description text view okay and I want this to be below there Let's say below ID I want this to be below our forecast high text there but I want this to be in the middle center there I'm going to center horizontal to be true there we go I'm gonna give it a little padding top about 10 in fact, let me say margin top of about 5 TP. There we go. And while we're here, let's make maybe this a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm going to go to our card view. And how about 220? There we go. That looks really good. Doesn't look much right now because everything looks not very aligned. And we can change things, of course. But for now, this will do. Uh, make sure this is actually 5dp like this and let's give it a text for now this is going to be mostly cloudy and I'm gonna say text size I want this size to be about 15 SP I'm gonna style text style that is I want this to be italic Okay. okay, very nice. And of course, we need to give it an ID. Well, we did give an ID, did we? Okay. And of course, let's go ahead and see why, what can we do to make this better? Let's replace with what they're suggesting. It's always a good idea because you know what? They know better. Okay, let's change this one as well very nice so remember now this is going to be inflated into our view pager in a second here all right so let's go ahead and create that view pager okay so now what we're going to do I'm going to get rid of a few things that we have here let's go to our main the idea here is to put right here a view pager widget so I'm gonna go below below our card it's got kind of I'm gonna say view pager make sure that it's a view pager from support v4 and I'm gonna make this match parent for the width and for the height it's gonna be wrap content okay so it's right there I'm going to make it short like that. I'm going to move it, maybe snap there. Oops. Let's see, let's delete this. Put it right about there. Give it right and left. There we go. Let's give it a color background for now, just for us to be able to see. Let's use one of these ones there. Okay, let's save and give it a run. We should be able, let's see, choose this one that's running. Let's see what we're going to be able to see. Right, so it's going up there because we need to make sure that we actually have this uh, constraint to the top here. Okay, let's give it a constraint. Let's go to design here. There we go. So I gave a constraint to the top view. Run here. 
and if all goes well we should see it there good so this is good of course we're not going to have that color at all but at least we know that it's there and let's go back and give it id because we need to be able to say id id as such i'm going to give this view pager and for width i'm going to go back and say i want this to be match parent as such okay there we go let's find a better color perhaps for now Okay, let's get rid of the colors. All right, so we have there. That's all good. So now we have our view pager, which is here inside here we just created. And we also have created our fragment forecast XML, which is this view here that we are ultimately going to add and make it have it work inside here. So it's going to show up here inside of our view pager so that users can scroll left and right to see different forecasts. All right, to do that, we need to create a pager adapter, which will then inflate our fragment fragment forecast here and create a fragment, so create an actual view, which will then be populated here along with the data. Okay, sounds very complicated, but not really. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a class called Let's go to right here, set of data. I'm going to right click, say new, Java class. We're going to call this class forecast view adapter, view pager adapter. Okay, and it's going to have a super class of view pager. There we go, that first one there. Say okay. And there we go. Oh, I guess I didn't finish it. Ah, let's get rid of this. We're going to use the fragment pager adapter like this. Okay, because we're going to be using fragment. We're going to be inflating fragments anyway. So let's use that one. Let's implement a few methods here. We're going to select all of them. There we go. And of course, we need to also create a constructor. So create constructor. There we go. That's very good. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is because we understand that all of these forecasts are going to be populated through using the data that we're getting from our API, right? Forecast API. So we could, because we are talking about fragments here or a view, okay, uh, we could create about 10 or 15 different fragments in code and then we just add them. But that's not very dynamic and that's absolutely not what you should ever do okay we have to make sure that we have those flexibilities when we code which means we are going to actually create fragments at runtime depending on how many forecasts we're getting from this array we are going to create that many fragments which incidentally will be the views that we need for our view pager here okay Okay, so for that, then inside of our forecast view page adapter, we're going to create a private list which will contain fragment types. So make sure we get the fragment from Android support library. And I'm going to call these fragments. Okay, and I'm going to pass those fragments here as a list. It's going to be a list of fragment support, call these fragments. Make sure we have a semicolon there. And since we're inside of a constructor, we're just going to say this, that fragments, meaning these fragments at the top. We're setting it to whatever we're getting inside here. So now that we know that this list will contain all the fragments that we're creating, that means then we can here say, instead of returning zero, we can say returns the fragments list dot size. And for here, to get each item, we can just go ahead and say this dot fragment in fact just to make sure this is the same I'm gonna say this again here so for here once this that fragments and I'm going to say dot get and I'm gonna pass of course the position that way it knows exactly we are returning the current position of the fragment that we are showing at the moment
as we scroll left and right in our view pager. It will all make sense once we get there, but this is the setting up of our adapter, and that's it. The next thing we're going to do is actually create the actual fragment. So I'm going to say new. I'm going to go down here, find, I'm going to say, I want, where is the fragment? Nope, actually here. So fragment, I want a blank fragment. And I'm going to get rid of all of these includes because we don't need any of those. And this one, I'm going to call this forecast fragment. And I don't want to create a layout, an XML layout, because I already have that one. I'm going to say finish. And there we go. Now, the thing here with fragments, we need to make sure somehow when we create a fragment, um, we the system goes and gets the Android app fragment, but we need to support one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to say app, let's say dot the let's see what is it I'm gonna get rid of this and then here I'm gonna say alt enter I got two options here so make sure you get the second one which is the support v4 app that's very important otherwise you run into a lot of issues say enter the moment you do that uh, we should have actually Ah, it still didn't do it. Let me get rid of this one more time. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. What do you know? Okay, let's try again. So I'm going to change that support. Say v4 app fragment like that. Okay. So this is very important. As you noticed, I failed a few times to actually get it right. But always make sure somehow uh, when we create fragments in Android Studio, it doesn't automatically uh, point or import the correct library. So we want to make sure we get support, that v4, that app, fragment. Okay, very important. All right, and with that, we also noticed that we, we have this required empty public constructor. So this is required so that uh, when it's been created, the view or the fragment is being instantiated. In older versions of Android, it requires to have an empty constructor in order for things to work. That's it. Okay. All right. So now here is where the fun begins, because we said that when we create this fragment, we are actually going to inflate get this fragment forecast XML here to create the actual view. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to create a view. Okay. I call this forecast view. We have our inflator here object being passed. So it's equal inflator. That inflate, you want to pass the resource ID. So r dot layout dot. I'm going to get fragment forecast and then get a passive view group. I'm going to pass container. And of course, I'm going to pass for to attach the root. I'm going to just say null because we don't have any of that. Up, oh, it has to be false. There we go. Okay, there we go. So now I can actually say at the bottom here, return forecast view. But we know that our forecast view. Now we have inflated this fragment forecast, which is literally this whole thing, this whole view here. We then have to instantiate all of these views so that we, that way we can then dynamically start populating them okay so we will do that in the next video because this video is already getting too long but i will see you in the next video